All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Bethany, as Felicia mentioned so nicely. Thank you, Felicia. Um, I am an educator with Singer Sewing, and this is another class that we're doing with Michaels. We're so excited. We do these so much, and we have so much fun with them, and we're so glad that you're here. Like she mentioned, I do have a colleague, um, Amy Milraney, in the chat and behind the scenes today. Um, if you have any questions, drop those in the chat and she'll let me know and I will do my best to answer them on air or she'll answer them as best she can. She'll be linking um, some of the projects or products and projects that I'm going to be showing you all today as well. So if you need anything, just be sure you keep that chat open to see those links and access those before we close out the video um, call today in the class. So if you're not familiar, today's class is all about quilting techniques and um, there's so many different things that we could talk about when it comes to quilting. It is a lot of fun, but there's a lot of information that goes along with quilting. So I'm going to give you a little info on what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about what does quilting mean? What is the actual technique of quilting? And we're going to talk about some beginner quilting techniques and some more advanced techniques that you can start practicing even as a beginner because there is a learning curve. Um, so we're going to talk about all of that. I'm going to show you proper um, tools that you need, whether it's presser feet or machine settings or uh, other accessories to have successful quilting projects. And then for you all, if you didn't know this, um, I have created a quick little fun uh, quilting project that we're going to drop in the chat. It's a really cute roll up placemat that's quilted. Um, so this could be perfect for Thanksgiving um, or for picnics or whatever, and you can make them for different holidays. So I wrote up a free little project for you all to try what we're going to learn today after class. And so Amy's going to drop that in the chat um, so that you all have it. If you're watching the playback, it'll be in the description of the video. Um, the one that I made, I just did a very simple form of it, but I'll show you what it looks like. This is the placemat. And the uh, placement has pockets. So there's like a big one right here for the napkin. And then there's three little slots here for your knife, fork, and spoon. And then the whole thing can roll up and has a little ribbon or uh, cable, like a cording to tie it up. And it's super, super cute. So on the go is great. Um, but if you just want to leave it flat for your table in your table setting, you absolutely could. In the instructions, I teach you two additional things to level up this project. I teach you how to add a little applique pumpkin or leaf, and I include those shapes, but you could add any shape for any holiday. So I tell you how to do a little applique design here on the top to add a little flair, as I like to say. And then I also teach you how to add the letter, the, the words like napkin, fork, knife, spoon, or whatever. Um, on the pockets if you have a machine that does letter stitching so most of our computerized machines that we have do offer some lettering uh stitches and you can program out words to stitch out which is really cool um so that is another feature that i mentioned in this tutorial that you'll be receiving so this is a really fun project and a good beginner friendly project so let's set that aside for just a minute but yeah i hope you guys go download this and take the techniques we're going to learn today in class and apply it to this project. I will tell you, um, the first thing we're going to talk about today is straight line quilting, um, which is what I did at the top here. I'm going to kind of hold it close so you go. You can see I did them at an angle, so they weren't just straight up and down, but I think that turned out really cute. And it's a fun way to add the stitches, you know, to the back as well, because it stitches straight through. All right. So, Quilting, what is actually the actual definition of quilting? Quilting is basically the technique of sewing between three layers of material. And those three layers are your quilt top that you've pieced together in some sort of design. This one's called a courthouse step because it looks like stairs. And then you have the quilt back, which is a solid piece of uh, material that coordinates. And then in between those, you have the batting. And I typically use a cotton batting, but there's polyester, there's so many different types. But what this makes up is called a quilt sandwich. It literally is just two pieces of fabric with batting in the middle 
and it's called a quilt sandwich. So when you actually go to quilt to this together, to make it all one, to, to bring all those pieces together, that's the actual technique of quilting. So we're gonna talk about different ways to quilt. Uh, we're not gonna be talking about piecing and creating like all these different designs in the front. That's another topic for another day, uh, but we're just gonna talk about quilting techniques, okay? So if you don't already have pen and paper uh, with you, I highly recommend having something near you um, that you can take some notes on. Like Felicia said, this is recorded, so you can always watch this back once it's posted to Michael's YouTube channel, probably within the next day or two. All right, so the machines I'm going to be sewing on today, I have two. It was just easier to set up two machines for each technique than try to switch it one over from one to the other. So the first machine I'm going to be working on today is the Singer Heavy Duty Mechanical 4452 sewing machine. Um, so we'll be working on that one first. And then the second one is our Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. And we're going to be doing free motion sewing or quilting on that one. And uh, free motion can be a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie. It's a skill set that I am still perfecting. Um, so you're going to see some of that today. <laughs> uh, it is more advanced uh, quilting technique, but it can be a lot of fun. And there's other ways that you can use free motion sewing beyond just quilting. So we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, but before we get started on the straight line quilting, I thought I'd show you a couple of examples besides the placemat that I already had. Um, and I, these are some projects that I've done for singer.com um, for our, our website. If you didn't know, we have free projects that I make every month for our website and they're free. And so you can always go check those out. And this is one I did back in March of this year. It is a quilt as you go block. This is a super beginner friendly, easy project because you don't even have to like precision cut all of these pieces. Um, there, it's just a really fun, quick project. And I added little ribbon ties to make it kind of like a catch all for like a coffee table or in my sewing room to keep up with my scissors and my bobbins and everything. Um, and so this is super cute. You could untie this and not add the ribbons and make it a little wall hanging. You could piece several of these together and make a bigger wall hanging, but this is a project that's super cute. I think, uh, Amy is going to link it. Uh, in the chat. So if you all want to save that to try it as well, this is a great beginner quilting project. And again, this was just a uh, straight line sewing quilting. The other one that I did is a bigger project. It's a full wall hanging. I did this for the month of se September for a September project of the month, but this is a beginner quilting project as well. This is it. Make sure you guys can see all of it. Um, so this one talks about fussy cutting so that your block has the featured like pumpkin in the center and all of that piecing. It talks about piecing these squares together. It goes through the process of adding the binding to finish the quilt. Um, and it talks about straight line quilting and using rollers, which is what we're gonna talk about next. So I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of what that would look like. All right. Uh, Lynn has a question. What is the address to the Singer website for the monthly projects? Um, Amy can drop that, but if you go to singer.com at the top, there's a column that says inspiration and under that is free sewing projects and they're all listed there. There are the ones that I create plus some of the other ones that our colleagues will create. Um, so you'll be able to find this, um, wall hanging, uh, tutorial on singer.com as well as the little catch-all, but she's going to link them all here so you can see them. Thank you, Amy, for doing that. I know I sent you a lot of links this morning. I was like, here, we're going to talk about all of these. I had, I didn't realize I had so many quilting examples until I, uh, came, I you know, sat down this morning and was like looking at pulling them all out of my bin. All right, so what we're going to talk about first is creating our quilt sandwich. Um, so for today's example, I have one um, already uh, just some four squares sewn up and uh, put with a backing. And this is my quilt sandwich. Now, when creating your quilt sandwich, there's a couple of things. Uh, I like to uh, make it easier on myself, but this isn't for everybody. And it also depends on how big your quilt is. But there is um, a basting adhesive that's a spray adhesive that you can use to 
create a temporary hold um, of your fabrics, your front and back to the, the batting so that it doesn't shift and move on you. Uh, do not use this if you have any sensitivity to aerosol sprays and be sure you use it in a very well ventilated area, which is why I'm not using it in here in my studio today, but I already did it. And um, that's very important if you wanna use it to just be safe about it read the instructions on there. Um, but it is helpful when doing little blocks like this. Um, and then the other thing is, and I'm sure you can see them on here, is these pins. So these pins are called quilting pins. And I'm gonna show you what they look like. They look like safety pins, but they do have a little bit of a bend in them. Can you see that? Hard to see. Um, has a little bit of a curve. It helps you get through the bulkiness of all three layers of your quilt sandwich. These are very important to keep fabric from shifting around, especially if you're not going to use any sort of basting spray, but I use both. Okay. So use both <laughs> if you can. Uh, if you use the adhesive, do you still have to use the spray? Um, I would recommend it, especially if it's a bigger project and you're not going to sit down and quilt it all at once. Um, I have some over here real quick. Let me pull that out. I'm going to show you that it's a very temporary hold and it will wash out if, when you wash your quilt. Um, this one is uh, doesn't have clips or pins. It is just um, the basting spray and I don't always get it to the very corner. I don't want it to get on uh, beyond my batting but as I like you can see I can it's tough but I can pull separate it still. Um, so it's a very temporary hold. I would recommend still pinning but this helps it um, from shifting around uh, while you're pinning or moving stuff around um, if you're not gonna quilt it right away. Sorry, I have a hair right across the bridge of my nose on my glasses. <laughs> there we go, it was tickling my face. Um, so I hope that it helps answer your question. I do recommend uh, using pins. Now for today's example, I um, don't have pins on there because I don't wanna have to keep stopping to remove them. We're just, we're not actually, quilting a finished project. So it takes a little pressure off. But what I wanted to say is create some little blocks like this, some little quilt sandwich. It doesn't even have to be a quilt top. It could just be solid fabrics on both sides. And you're going to want to practice these techniques that I'm going to show you today before you decide to sit down and do it on a finished quilt. Because you spend all this time piecing together this beautiful quilt top and making it, putting it all together. And you know, you definitely want to practice the skill of actually quilting it together before. Uh, you do it on your finished project. So any other questions? Do I prefer the spray to pins? I prefer both, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Um, my mom, my mom's a quilter. She introduced me to the spray. It's great, especially for quick little projects. Um, for bigger quilts, I probably really wouldn't, um, but it does help smooth out the fabric. So while you pin, it's really nice. It just to need a little bit. You don't have to douse it. Okay. So when it comes to quilting, there's a couple of feet that are important. I'm sure you all know if you're here and you've done any quilting, uh, especially the piecing of the front of the quilt, that a quarter inch foot is a must have for quilting. So I've got two to show you here. This is a little metal one. And then I have a clear one as well. They look slightly different, but they have the quarter inch marks on the sides and on the top. And so these are extremely helpful with um, Piecing, um, but you can also use this when doing like the binding if you want to do straight stitch binding, if you don't want to hand sew binding. Um, so that is another option. It's important to have those when you start a quilting project. So I just wanted to mention them real quick. Um, and then I'm going to show you the straight line quilting here in a second, but I also wanted to show you that there's a foot called Stitch in the Ditch. Um, and it basically has a groove channel here that separates the seams. So for example, if I made this courthouse step and I didn't want to quilt over it, I liked it, I didn't want to take away from it, but you still need to sew all of these layers together. A stitch in the ditch foot will stitch in the ditch of these seams that you've already pieced together and it hides it in there. And that little guide on that foot helps you stay in that ditch. 
between where you've already sewn. Um, so it's a way of quilting it together without seeing the quilting stitches. Um, so that is another technique. We're not going to show that today because you doesn't really show up on camera because it hides the stitches. But I wanted to mention that it is an option if you really love how your quilt came together, but you don't want to quilt a bunch of stuff over it. Um, that's fine. It's your quilt. You can do it however you want. That's the fun part of quilting. But there is, uh, it still needs to be all sewn together. So a stitch in the ditch foot with stitching into those seam lines is a really good option for that. So, all right, y'all ready to sew? <laughs> hey, all right. Becky? Yeah. Um, we have a question about why you need different feet for quilting. Uh, it just depends on the step for quilting and the type of quilting. So when you're piecing together, you need the quarter inch. It's going to help you when you are piecing um, quilting pieces together. The It's always a quarter inch seam allowance. So it makes it really easy to keep that straight line and make sure you're staying in that quarter inch. If it gets off at all, it'll, sh it'll get all of your seam matching seams off uh, and it shows. Uh, and it will just snowball as as a, you piece your quilt together. So um, quarter inch uh, piecing uh, for quilting is just the standard um, for all quilting patterns and everything. Um, so you'll see me talk about that in the wall hanging project that she linked. That one goes into full detail, start to finish, uh, terminology and everything. So if you've never done a quilting project before, I definitely recommend downloading and reading through that going to teach you a ton. I put it all in one project so we had it all in one place. Um, the stitch in the ditch is an optional foot uh, depending on that type of quilting that you want to do. The foot that I'm going to show you next is the even feed walking foot. Uh, this is another really amazing must-have foot for quilting. Uh, it's kind of big and clunky but it helps so much with getting the bulkiness of your quilt sandwich through the machine evenly which is why it's called an even feed or what a lot of people call a walking foot. Now you'll see it goes up and down like this. So this will move with the needle, which helps the feet move. So on your sewing machine, let's go over here real quick. I already have one attached here. Um, on your sewing machine up under here, we have the feed dogs or the feed teeth, right? That are on the sewing surface. And that's what feeds the fabric through from the underside of the fabric. But because this is so bulky, um, we want to have the feed, the teeth on the top. So on this one, on this walking foot, you'll see that there's te these little white teeth right here. I know it's a little hard to see, but um, there's like these grippy teeth coming down from the top that align with the feed dogs on the bottom so that it'll feed the fabric through from the top and bottom evenly as it, the fabric moves through, if that makes sense. Okay. This even feed or walking foot is not just for quilting though. Um, I've used this so many times. It's perfect for any challenging fabrics to sew on a home sewing machine, like stretchy knits, satins and silks, anything slippery like that. This will prevent it from shifting and moving or stretching the top and not the bottom or vice versa. Um, so this helps feed all of those fabrics through evenly. Um, there was a project once that I was sewing up and I was struggling because my denim that I was using doesn't stretch, but I was attaching a faux stretchy Sherpa to it. I was making was making a snuggle sack sleeping bag for my dog, okay? And she needed it. And I was struggling because I wanted this furry lining to attach to the denim outside. And this foot right here is the only way I was able to accomplish that without the Sherpa stretching more than the denim would. And it helped me attach those two different types of fabrics together. And they were so thick, it helped keep it even. So a walking foot is a must have in any sewist repertoire of, of accessories to have, but it definitely comes in handy with quilting. So let's go, actually, before we go over to the machine to sew, we're gonna talk about straight line quilting first and you'll see on here I've already drawn some lines and I've already stitched a couple but I have some that I have not stitched so we'll sew those together um, but I just use a straight line ruler for drawing my lines and um, you can use a small one for small blocks you can use a long one like I have here um, for bigger areas uh, I typically will do crisscross through an, a, a square 
Um, so I can line it up corner to corner to keep them straight. Uh, but when you're doing your ruler marks, you definitely want to do ruler marks for straight, straight lines uh, quilting. The reason being, no one can perfectly sew a straight line all the way across, especially with the walking foot. There's a lot of movement. Um, so take the time to draw out your lines on your quilt. Uh, when I did, where is it? I put it on the floor. No, I didn't. Where is it? Well, I just had it. Well, I don't know where it went. It has walked away. Nope, there it is. It was under my other one. When I did the project that you guys are receiving, um, well, I drew all of these stitch lines on the quilt before I started stitching them out. That's how they look all uniformed. And they're all an inch apart. That was just my preference, but you can do them going one way, then turn around and do them going the other way. You can go vertical, horizontal, it's totally up to you. Um, but definitely take the time to draw the lines. When drawing the lines, um, you are going to want to use a fabric pin or marker that will go away. Um, that's not permanent, obviously, because this is your quilt top. Um, so most commonly used is just a common fabric marker that washes away in the wash or with a rag, a wet rag. The other is, you know, using um, a fabric pencil or even chalk, uh, like a tailor's chalk you could use. Um, but I'm going to show you all something that I used and I, I'm going to show it to you first. It's called a friction pen. It's an erasable ink. Um, so it looks just like a pen. You can write with it. Um, that's what I used on this one. So you can see some of those blue lines here. They come in like blue, black, and red, I think. Um, I just use the blue uh, most of the time. But when I get done with this, and I go back to my sewing room, I'll take my iron and with the steam and I run it over my whole quilt top and that ink disappears. So easy. I don't have to wash anything. It's wonderful. Um, but the only thing is definitely practice and make sure that this pen will come off of your fabric and your thread because I'm using like a cotton thread but if you're using like a polyester or a different one sometimes it doesn't want to come off so again test it on a scrap quilt sandwich before you uh do it on your finished project okay but this is a fun one I always like to mention that one are you going to cover binding today I'm not covering covering binding today that is a uh, we're just quilting today. So we're just doing different styles of quilting. Um, if you want to learn step-by-step step how to bind, do binding, the fall wall hanging that I showed from the September project of the month that Amy linked goes through every step, detail and detail with photos in that project. So definitely go download that. Um, I'm sure we'll do a class on that in the future, but that's a whole nother topic and I only have an hour with you guys. Um, someone says they love the pilot friction pins. They're great. They're so fun. Um, if you didn't want to just do straight lines, you could doodle squirrels to follow along. Um, you could use different shape rulers and stuff to create shapes um, and draw them out to have something to follow along. Okay, so let's get over to the machine. As you see, I have the walking foot set up here. When you do put on the walking foot, you do have to remove the ankle and the foot that was previously on it. We have to remove the ankle and you wanna make sure that that bar, this bar right here, goes up over the bar that screws in the needle right here. Because as the needle moves up and down, if it's on top of that, it'll make the bar move up and down and make the feet move, okay? It's really a cool contraption that when you get it set up right, it works wonderfully. All right. So when you're doing straight lines um, quilting, you definitely want to follow your lines. So I am going to line mine up here. You want to start at the edge of your quilt, not on the backing, but on the edge of like, excuse me, I have the hiccups, on the edge with the batting. I'm going to bring this around real quick. Hold on. I was messing with this earlier. I had an extra thread in there. There we go. Okay. When it comes to quilting, uh, just doing straight stitches, most people will do a three millimeter straight stitch instead of a 2.5, which is the standard because you want these stitches to be a little more visible. 
that's part of the design of quilting is it's adding um you know character to the front of your quilt so you want it to be visible so i've turned this to a straight stitch at a three millimeter stitch length and when you another rule for quilting is you don't really back stitch unless you're doing the binding at the end and you're securing the binding, um, you don't really back stitch. You don't want that extra bulk of those extra stitches. So I'm going to lower my needle and we're just gonna follow, follow my, I'm sewing from an angle. So forgive me if my line's not super straight, but I want you to see how this is moving and helping feed the fabric through and with the walking foot. Now I just sewed across here, but you can see my stitches because I extended the length a little bit. Um, so they're three millimeters instead of 2.5. And I just followed that line. And when I go back to my sewing room later, I'll iron this and my little blue marker will go away. Now, another thing to mention is as you're quilting, sometimes you get all this extra bulk over here. Uh, and the best thing to handle that with is just to take the time to kind of roll up your quilt so it doesn't start pushing and make your lines not straight. Um, I don't have one with me. Actually, let's see here. Some people use clips. I have, I don't know if this one's big enough. It might be, there we go. So sometimes you can use a clip to keep it rolled up. But if you have a lot, you may need like a bigger clamp to keep it uh, rolled up and out of the way. So you can focus on your straight line stitching. Hey, Bethany. Yeah, um, we have a question asking about um, is the batting a half inch greater than the patchwork top and how much greater is the backing so. Um, That's a great question. This is just the sample piece that I pieced together so I didn't precision cut and measure um, all of it so your backing is always going to be bigger than your quilt top but your quilt top and your batting should be the same size. If your batting is a little bigger, that's fine. If you want to give yourself a little wiggle room as you place and pin your quilt top to, you know, make your sandwich. But before you start sewing on like your binding or doing any of the quilting and stuff, you are going to want to trim your batting down to the same size as your quilt top. Okay. Does that help? Thank you. This is just me making little practice quilt sandwiches for today's class. So they're not... Perfect. And this is a, a good use of scrap fabric, um, making these little quilt sandwiches and practicing these different techniques. Just like that, straight across. And so when you're done, you end up with lines going in any direction that you want. You can do more going, you know, across here again, however much you want, which is why I recommend putting the ruler and the marker or whatever marking um, tool you want to use. When you mark it all, you can see where all those stitches are going to be and you can go, that might be a little too busy or that might not be enough. Maybe I should do some the other way. And then if you don't like it, you can remove it and redo your lines then change it up before you actually stitch through. Because once you stitch it through, it's really not ideal to try to remove it or um, it just, it's a pain. <laughs> so I want you to avoid that mistake, but that's why I like to practice. So that's our straight line uh, quilting, super fun. It's a great beginner technique and it gives you the quilted look. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is free motion quilting. Uh, this one is definitely a more advanced technique. I'm going to show you a couple of examples here of some finished projects. Now, I'll preface this with these are not my finished projects. My wonderful boss, who has been sewing longer than me and is much more experienced in quilting uh, than I am, she created some of these examples So, in, and is allowing me to show them to you all today. So this is not my work, but I wanted to show you all this little... Uh, you could use this as a placemat. You could put this in the center of a table. It's super cute. Um, very simple sew up. I love her little uh, applique satin stitch around the center here. But one thing I wanted to point out is 
uh, there's this block right here that has free motion uh, <laughs> stitching or quilting right here. These blue ones don't have anything. And then the ones with the uh, vegetables has a decorative stitch that just runs down the side. Um, so there's so many different ways to add character to your projects, um, but this is free motion right here. And this is just a learning curve. And we're gonna talk about the techniques to be able to practice this, okay? Isn't this one cool? I love this one. I'm so glad she let me borrow some of her examples um, that she had. Let me show you another one real quick. This one has a lot of different um, quilting techniques in it. I know it's kind of big for the camera, so I'm gonna do my best to hold it up for you all and then I'll bring it in closer. But what I wanted to show you is at the top, she did white thread on white fabric. So it adds all of this fun texture and character um, you could do this with matching threads. You can do this with uh, contrasting threads to make it stand out more, but this is all free motion. And then she did decorative stitches in the pink across the top. And then these are all pieced together at the bottom. The top is just one solid piece. So just a different approach. There's no... Uh, Right, I mean, there's really no right or wrong way of how you wanna quilt your finished project. It's totally up to you. And um, as my mom says, it's always different every project because there's areas that she doesn't wanna quilt over like little faces of snowmen or something, but she'll stitch around them. Um, so that's another example of how you can use different types of quilting techniques to, you don't have to use the same thing over the whole project. Um, so let's talk about the different types of free motion, and then we're gonna practice them on the machine here together. And this is a fun thing to do, just make another quilt sandwich. Again, scrap fabric, doesn't have to be perfect, and do a straight line and kind of block it off, and then practice each technique in each, in each square until you can figure out which one you like the most or which one you're picking up a little faster and you wanna keep practicing and try. Um, so this one right here, it's a very common um, style in the sense that it's just completely random all over, but you'll notice that none of the stitches are crossing over each other, okay? And so that is something that you have to be conscious of when you are quilting this technique is you're not just looking at what you're doing, but you're looking ahead at where you're gonna go. Um, that's why I said this is a, a bit of a learning curve. Um, this one down here is more geometric with straight lines, but getting them back and forth and close together and going different directions. Um, and this one, again, is not crisscrossing over uh, your stitches. So they're all following different straight lines. This one, which I find the easiest to do as a beginner, is um, doing swirls, little loopy swirls. They can crisscross over each other. They evenly feel, um, you know, cover the area, but there, it takes a little of the pressure off when you can swirl over. And then this top area up here, this is called pebbling or doing little, makes it look like stones or pebbles. And that is just doing a bunch of stitches and circles in different size circles all next to each other. I find this one very hard personally. <laughs> I've practiced it. I wanna show you. Uh, a little embarrass myself a little bit. Like I said, this is a this is a technique that's more advanced. It does take a long time to practice. My boss made this um, example when she was teaching me how to do all of this, and she's like, "It's not even that good." There's people that master this even more, and I was like, "This looks great to me." So for me, I'm want to achieve this, <laughs> but she's still learning. She's still practicing. It's just one of those things. You it takes time. Um, I kind of told her jokingly, like it. It's like learning a musical instrument. It's not going to come right away. You have to keep practicing it. And this is one of those techniques for quilting. All right, so I'm going to embarrass myself for a minute and then we're going <laughs> to show you some free motion um, techniques. So here is, and I'm hoping you guys can see this on camera, a couple of my attempts to try different techniques. I didn't block mine off. I just kind of went for it. 
I did pretty well with the not crisscrossing. Um, I tried a few little straight lines. I tried some pebbling. Then my pebbling got real funky for a minute. There's some swirls at the bottom. And then I was uh, on a video call with my friend Ashley and I was working on this and she said, write my name. And so I did <laughs> um, with free motion. So you don't have to just follow different patterns. You can create your own. Um, there are a ton of things that you could print out um, like stencils. You can print them out. You can practice with the paper. You can transfer them to your fabric. Anyways, you can write words with free motion. We're going to, again, keep practicing. Um, but we're going to show you how to set up your machine. And we're going to show you a few examples. So let's go over to this machine. This machine is set up with what's called the free motion or darning foot. This foot. Um, does attach by taking off the ankle, just like the walking foot and attaching it to the post here. And you do have the little arm that comes up over the needle post. And you'll see here that my feed dogs are down. So if you, um, on your machine, some are down inside on the front, some are on the back, there should be a place to lower your feed dogs. If you do not have that option, some machines have a little plastic plate that comes and snaps into some little holes that cover the feed dogs. You do not want the feed dogs up because we do not want the fabric to feed straight through. We want to free motion move it around. So feed dogs are not going to be used for this technique. Um, the other thing you'll see on my machine, if you can't tell, is I added the, let's just kind of turn it a little bit, the, ext oh, the extension table. Um, when you're doing free motion, you definitely want to have an extension table on your machine so it keeps your fabric nice and flat and, and it gives you some room to put your hands to be able to move the fabric around. So this is another little four piece quilt block that I did. Um, I did not attach this at all. I did not use spray adhesive or anything actually. So we'll see how well it does. But um, when you go to do this, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. Um, you're going to use, you can use a straight stitch, you can use a zigzag stitch, you can use a couple of different ones, just keep in mind that it needs to fit within that space on the free motion darning foot. Um, I'm, I'm going to use a straight stitch for the example today. Uh, the thing that doesn't matter, and I'm going to talk to you guys up here instead of just looking at that, the thing that doesn't matter with free motion is stitch length. You are creating the stitch length. So what really matters is um the speed and the motion so it's a lot of eye hand foot coordination um so if you have a machine like the one i'm using right now that has speed control you may want to lower that so that it doesn't get away from you okay um your stitch length is going to be based on how fast you move the fabric and how fast you're sewing so just keep that in mind it the, like i said this takes practice and getting started can be a little nerve wracking. The other thing to remember is when you're planning or when you're deciding to do free motion, you need to plan it out on your project. You need to know where you're going to do this design, what design you're going to do and where you need to start. The rule of thumb is start in the center and work your way out. Um, that way it looks organic and that it, way it gets all covered. Um, if you do start in one corner and you try to work your way across, you'll be able to see that motion. And so you want it to look organic and natural, okay? Um, so those are a couple of rules you might wanna write down uh, in regards to free motion sewing or quilting. This is also a technique called stippling. So if you wanna see other examples or types of uh, free motion quilting, you can also search for the word stippling like on YouTube and stuff and you'll see other things like that. All right, so I have just a white thread in here. I have the same thread in my bobbin down here. And there we go. To get started, you put your foot in or your foot down. You'll notice that the foot is not going to touch um, when you lower the foot, it's not going to touch the fabric right away. But I'm going to drop my needle. And when I drop my needle, you'll see it touch then. This foot is going to bounce kind of up and down as I stitch around. And I like to just kind of with my hand will do a couple of small stitches together because again, you do not backstitch 
for free motion. So that kind of locks in my starting point. And then I am going to find my scissors and just trim this top thread. You have to be so careful with this. I can always trim it more when I get done. All right, so. And let's see, which one do I wanna do first? Which one do I want to attempt to do first? <laughs> Uh, let's just kind of do a little spiral design. Okay, so it's not the prettiest spiral, but it's a spiral. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I will say if you are coming to, let's say I had this pin, if you come to a pin, you wanna stop, you wanna make sure you leave your needle in the down position. So when you unpin it, your fabric doesn't shift. All right, so now that I showed you real quick what that looks like, someone just said, that's so cool. It really is a lot of fun. I'm not trying to stress you out with all of the, scary parts of it it's really so so much fun and there's I just want you to try it it can't hurt to try right I was kind of nervous the first time I did it it was funny my my boss Sonny was sitting with me and I was practicing for the very first time and she's like I got done and she goes okay and now you can breathe and I didn't even realize I was holding my breath like the whole time so it's it's kind of hard not to do that when you first get started doing it it's okay um it takes a minute to get a feel for the right speed, moving it around. But let me tell you, you want to keep what she referenced to me and it helped me kind of visualize it, a horizon line. Um, your fabric is going to stay at this flat horizon line. You're not going to be doing all of this. Okay. So just keep it in a horizon uh, and keep your hands flat on it and it should move just smoothly. This is why an extension table is very helpful because you want to have your hands close but not too close and you want to be able to move it around freely okay so cut that thread real quick um so i'll just see if you guys can see this it's not the prettiest spiral but this is a really fun one to start with just to get the motion because you're just going in the same direction and get used to um the stitching and find the right speed. You know, I sped up a little bit and it kind of got away from me and then I slowed down and it got away from me and it just takes a little, or it will take some practice. Okay. But even still, this is, it's not perfect, but it's not, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Let's try another spot over here. I'm going to just trim this a little. Since we're just practicing, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to trim that and uh, let's see here. So this is me just doing a little more of the ge geometric shape. It's not gonna be perfectly straight lines. I'm not following a line. Sometimes people, if, when they first get started, they wanna draw and kind of try to follow a shape or a line and you absolutely can to get the feel for it. But I also find that if I have something I have to follow and I get off of it, I get like, I kind of panic <laughs> and I like make quick movements. And I'm like, oh, it's all messed up. So, you know, I kind of like just, going for it and, and trying different things. All right, let's do another one.
normally you would take the time to really clip the shorter, raise the foot and do all of that, but we're just gonna go for it. Hey, Bethany, someone asked, um, can you trace the leaves? Like, can you use whatever pattern is on your material to kind of give you? Absolutely. There's a lot of people that will follow the shape of like an applique or they'll follow um, the pattern on their fabric and they'll outline it if they want. Like you could outline the little center of the uh, flowers there. This one, I just did a simple kind of a swirl where I'm crisscrossing over um, my stitches. I find this one very natural and easier to kind of maneuver. Um, and then I'm gonna try to do some pebbling, but you guys saw my example earlier. This one I do struggle with a little bit. Some people get it right away. You know, it just takes a little practice. Um, but when you do a bunch of it, it can be really, really cool looking. So let's just go for it. I do find that doing this one a little faster helps. Okay, let's see. This one might be a little hard to see just because it's white thread on white block here, but let me just hold it up this way. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I feel like this was one of my better tries though. The key with, oh, you can kind of see it better on the back. The key with pebbling is your circles need to touch and they need to be like different sizes. So it looks more like a natural pebble like this example, does that make sense? All right, so there was my attempt at <laughs> doing some more free motion. I'm getting better. I, I wanted to show you where I started so you could see how far I've come. But again, this is me doing months of practice just when I can. Um, so if this is a technique that you wanna keep trying, please keep trying it. Um, when I wrote my friend's name, Again, you do not have to do this just for quilting. So I'm actually gonna be working on a project in the future for Singer where I use the free motion sewing to write a word on a pocket or write a word on a collar um, or to put some a, a small shape on a cuff of a shirt. So there's other places and times that you can utilize free motion sewing that's not just for quilting. Uh, this can be a lot of fun. This could be fun to like let your kids sit down with a little thing like this and just let them play and have fun. Like it's, I don't know. I really enjoy this. I, for me, quilting is very much following the rules of quilting, but when you do free motion, it kind of like all those rules for me go right out the window and I'm not much of a fan of following the rules. So this is right up my alley. <laughs> uh, you can trace the leaves. Absolutely. That's a great idea. I, I've seen a lot of people trace shapes and do different things like that. So Anyways, what do you guys think about these quilting techniques? Let it let us know in the chat if you are excited to try any of these. Again, this is a playback, so you can rewatch this later. Um, I don't want to make sure that's not coming through the video. Um, but anyways, let us know if you have any questions. All of those projects we showed you are linked uh, in the chat, and they'll be in the description of the recording. So you all can be able to use those um, to practice uh, the different quilting and make a finished project. Um, oh, thank going to play. I love that, Patty. It is plain. It really is plain. Um, just take two pieces of fabric, sandwiched between some batting, uh, pin it together, and have some fun. Just 
set up your machine for that and get comfortable with the speed. That really is the biggest thing is the speed. Um, another thing I want to mention that I didn't mention before is needles. When you're quilting, you want to use quilting needles or microtex needles. They help prevent bigger holes in your fabric. So you really are just seeing the stitch and not a hole uh, in your fabric. I'm so glad you enjoyed the class. Thank you so much. If you guys make practice samples or finished projects from what we shared today, please use the hashtag Singer Sewing and the hashtag Make It With Michael so we can see that and what you learned. Again, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.